Hi Capricorn, welcome to Higher Source Show for a tarot reading for all Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Thank you to all of you for your support. I love tarot. I love all of you. I think of you every day. I send you positive energy because we're connected. And I can't do this without you. I need the energy. Otherwise, it'd be really boring just reading for myself all the time. And if you're new here, welcome to you. I post new readings every Friday, then again on Monday. So if a reading doesn't resonate, don't ever try to force it to make sense. Just come back in a couple of days, watch a new reading, or even you could look around on the Monday readings because the style is different every week. So um, a couple of weeks ago, I posted a four-month predictive reading that I only do once a quarter. So if you haven't seen that, you might enjoy that. And if you like tarot and you like the channel, I'd love to invite you to subscribe to Higher Source Tarot. All right, what advice do you have for Sag or excuse me, Capricorn? I almost said Sagittarius, I apologize. All right, what does Capricorn need to know, please? What messages do you have for Capricorn, please? Okay. All right, so we'll begin here with a tarot reading, and then we'll have an Angel Answers Oracle card reading, too. You've got the Two of Wands, the Wheel of Fortune, the Two of Swords, the Two, ooh, two, 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 that's pretty cool. Two of Cups, the Moon, the King of Swords, the Hermit, and the Eight, or excuse me, Seven of Cups. Well, all right, twos are all about reflection. They're about the subconscious factors in your life. And if you're going, well, what in the world? How am I supposed to know my subconscious? Just look around you and you'll see the evidence, what your subconscious beliefs are. What are your relationships like? How are your finances? And so you can uh, impact your own subconscious with the subconscious mind. And so you can over, over like reprogram it. There's lots of things like um, NLP is one way, but there's many, many ways through meditation and really your feelings are the secret to any of anything. But twos are also about duplication, okay? So especially with that two of cups, two of wands energy, you've got, you've got a relationship here. Now, you may feel a bit caught in the middle of something with the two of swords, but we'll talk about that in a, middle, a minute. You've got, um, you've got all the fixed signs here. You've got Virgo and you've got Pisces here. So uh, if it's any of those, and then of course you've got water and air as well and fire. So the two of wands, wands are about expansion and growth and enterprise. This is that part of the visualizer. You look out at your life, you take a look at the landscape and you say, where do I want to go? But this is with an empowered vision. This is not looking out and being lost. He holds the world in his hand, but he wants a bigger world. So for some of you, it's that go-getter energy. The wands are all about upwardly mobile. They move, they make gains. Wands do not sit still. Okay, wands don't cry. You look at like even the 10 of wands, man, he's holding, the, he's carrying those wands. He is not going to let those things down. So with this, it's almost like, it's for somebody here, it feels like you've got the switch turned into onto beast mode and you're not turning it off, whatever that's for, if it's work related for you. For others of you though, you're drawing in a relationship, all right, if it's not work related. And it's a new phase. You've got a new beginning here. And it's got depth to it. So if you've been in some things that weren't particularly deep, they were more superficial kinds of things, things are going to get serious here. So we love the Wheel of Fortune. We always say this is the Wheel of Fortune, not the Wheel of Misfortune. This is bringing in alignment. It's positive events. It's, you know, those things that seem like you can't catch a struggle here. It's evolution. It's some would say it's destiny at destiny too, but it's all about new cycles and patterns and it's an, always a turn for the better. So if things were stagnant and stuck, this moves things forward and brings in that momentum. The other thing about it too is it's a portal. This connects you into the divine. That sphinx that sits on the top of the wheel, you know, he's not hanging onto the edge for dear life. It's not like his body is hanging off the side while the wheel spins. He's unbothered because for you, you've got an inner power. And so any situation, you're using that inner power. Now in a relationship, again, it builds this beautiful momentum, but there's also depth here and there's wisdom from past relationships. There's a real love here though. I mean, it is, it is this high, this is high vibrational stuff. This is not a relationship 
that comes together when two low vibrational beings enter. This is really about ascension, growth, new beginnings, and definitely a match. So the two of swords is here. And some of you, it may just be too much thinking. Um, so if you're a Capricorn and you've been overthinking things, go get, go do something. Don't talk about it anymore. Go find something else to do. Um, and I mean that in a loving way because with this, it kind of, it jams you up. You know, it's like, it gives you this inert energy and it builds in fear that is not realistic. It's like fear is future events appearing real in this energy. So there's nothing off uh, out of your reach, really. This is all an illusion that the mind creates, so the mind can dominate. And so with this, it's all about taking that blindfold off, not being afraid of what is unseen, knowing that the universe always has your back. There's energy coming throughout you right now. So there's nothing to fear here. The Two of Cups, of course, is that reciprocal loving energy. It also can be a match in work if you're making some changes in moving forward with work. But in the Two of Cups, it's a soulmate energy and it's very compatible energy. I do get that Virgo energy coming in that's so wise and balanced and deep. It's important here. And so with the Two of Cups, you are, you're not trying to change the other person into somebody you want. They come as they are supposed to be. And there's real love here. So there's no need to do that. So with the moon, it's a phase, a new phase starting. There's again, the wisdom here too. And the two pillars in the background, they represent knowledge and wisdom. So if you didn't know something or you wondered about something with that wheel of fortune, you may not only get information, but this can be that moving forward in that, that new encounter, that new meeting. And it brings in a new element that starts you in this cycle. So with the moon, again, this is all about the subconscious organization. That's important here. And going within and influencing your subconscious because that will, you'll get what you believe. You get what you are, right? And so it's um, those hidden aspects. They do come out here. Everything comes out in the daylight. So the king of swords also brings in communication, but also clarity of thought. He's in the energy of boldness and courage and using your discrimination. And, and also, too, though, in this, whatever this relationship or situation is for you, even if it's work, too, there's integrity here. There's You can trust the king of swords. He doesn't double-cross people. This is an energy of somebody who has great integrity. Um, he can be a little bit irritable, though, okay? So we have to watch out for that if that's you. And the communication here, he can be a bit... Uh, he's assertive, but he's like very brusque. He can be very brusque about how he communicates and that can be off-putting for people. But we do have nice aspects to tone that down. The hermit everyone loves to see. It really is knowing who you are and you don't get this by, you know, putting on makeup at Sephora or going through the, you know, at the gym and, and seeing how much you can deadlift. I mean, that's not where we figure this stuff out. It's going within, it's quieting the mind, it's being in peace in nature and knowing you have the universe inside of you. This is your very best teacher, your inner voice. He holds that lantern in the night for you to tell you you've got guidance here. You've got higher wisdom here. It's already in you. And so there's a reliance on your inner self here, but it allows you to reach heights that you didn't know were available to you. And so in this kind of energy, it may not be in the next week or two, but when you start to do this over time, I've seen it in my own life. I've tested this. You will have things happen again that you did not know was available to you or you were capable of. You will go beyond what you thought you could do in this energy. So with the eight, uh, seven of cups, I don't know why I keep trying to call it the eight. The seven of cups here, you've got choices here. Sevens are, again, they're about victory and alignment there's a successful conclusion, even though you have to use your discernment here, okay? Because there's a lot of different elements showing up here. So again, in a relationship, it, it does feel like there's a relationship that moves forward here. But I feel like there's something with that Two of Swords that kind of gives you pause. And so with the Seven of Cups, some of you, it's, it's all about getting right into things and not sitting in the analysis piece because that analysis paralysis can kind of build up illusions. And so with the Seven of Cups, when you go into the Hermit and the 
the King of Swords energy, that again will allow you to have the clarity to know what to choose here. But I do feel like you have a very compatible relationship. There may be more opportunities too coming in with work. So especially those of you that are kind of toying with an idea of making your side business your main business. I feel like that's part of this for somebody here, Capricorn, this idea of, you know, do I want to keep staying here and, and working for the system or do I want to be my own best friend and my own boss? I do have a friend of mine who's an accountant and um, he's always worked for himself and he said at this point in his career he'd be unemployable because he's so used to just doing his own thing and setting his own hours. So there's definitely freedom in it, but again, it's like if you ever have to go back to, although you don't, I mean, you know, you can, for him, he's had a 30-year career doing it. So you've got helpful people here. That is interesting because you've got guidance here, but there's not a lot of cards to indicate other people along the way. So with this, you're being given guidance. The right people will show up. You've got a fortunate turn of events, so any any resources you need get brought in. They say look for a sign. Know that the signs will be delivered to you in the way that you can receive them. And that's why some people have things like clairvoyance and clairaudience because they're willing to receive that information in that way. Others of us, it could be the universe uses numbers a lot or songs or insects or rabbits or you know animals are four-legged friends. Those kinds of things will show up. And when they do... I've heard it that it can be even more impactful, not just acknowledging it, but even speaking it out loud because your voice has a vibration. They say compromise. So with that, two, all these two, two, twos showing up here, um, there may be something with this. If the two of swords is about being stuck on something in a relationship, you've got a compatible energy here though. So it may be about just kind of letting go of some things within the next few weeks. So things are definitely moving forward and you do have a yes, okay? It's an emphatic yes. Nothing is off limits for you, Capricorn. I love you and I'll be back again soon.